Welcome to Start a Conversation. My name is Dr. Shawnee Byers. Something that brings out the joy is the fact that I know I have to work to be superior. Sometimes I just, um, I, sometimes I feel defeated enough to where I don't even deal with it. There's an immense strength that we don't acknowledge in ourselves. The joy is understanding, mm -hmm. you know, who I am and that I have choices. And we don't figure out that we don't put it down until it's weighed us down to the point where it's killing us. Who is the black man authentically? You know, mm -hmm. who is the black man? I think the quintessential black man is an overcomer mm -hmm. by nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. this is this is a world that is set up to systematically destroy us at every level mm -hmm. on a regular basis, generationally speaking, and yet we can sit here at this table and have this discussion. Mm -hmm. And yet each one of us has at least 20 different examples of black men who are successful in any number of different areas, mm -hmm. whether it is politically, economically, spiritually, otherwise. That's right. And so that's, that's the first word I could think of is just an overcomer, and we have to be. Mm -hmm. We have no right. choice but to be. Mm -hmm. When you mentioned it, I thought of somebody who, like I constantly go back and I, rep and I use the representation of a black man at his highest degree, you know? And he died at a young age. Mm -hmm. And f uh, for myself, uh, I hold to the epitome Fred Hampton. Mm. Um, he was a social activist, he was a Black Panther leader, he was 21 years old. Yeah. He's right at the point in time where our government was strong in what they were implementing mm. in terms of COINTELPRO and having um, positive effects for what they were doing. And this is a man that had a short moment in time yeah. um, to be able to express himself. And a lot of times that's what we're given. Yeah, I appreciate people like Eric Gardner um, because before he said, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, he said, leave me alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Leave me alone, I ain't taking this no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it took six, seven dudes to come and bring that guy down. That's, you know, sometimes we're only given that short moment. Fred Hampton was given a short moment and it was a bright light. That, that's definitely one of my people, Fred Hampton, because. Um, I'm always talking Fred Hampton. To the random stranger, I'm talking Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. But um, I would also argue uh, Brother Malcolm X, and um, I would argue uh, Dr. Amos Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. <laughs> they're ready. They ain't ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, but but I, I really admire and admonish um, Malcolm X and. And, and Fred Hampton, because they were able to, they were charismatic enough to take the intellectual thought processes and economic strengths and, and ideologies of an Amos Wilson and transcend them to people, countries over, over the seas and, and through the airways that, that Amos Wilson, as as intellectually superior as he was, was not able to because he didn't fit the aesthetic of delivery or of appearance. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, for me, I can't have either one of those three men without the other because they're all, to me, linked mm -hmm. together. It's been argued that the government, through COINTELPRO, never, never let a black man who was a leader get past the age of 40. Mm -hmm. Because once you got to the age of 40, you were able to link the old mm -hmm. and the young. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've had a person who's been a leader who was that outspoken and that worldwide that has lasted past the age of 40. Now, I could be wrong, and I mean in our new time, in our, in our, our modern era. That transcends across just like our typical uh, idea of what leader is, because that yeah. transcends across, uh, you know, that's, that's performing artists as well. Those institutions at that period, and what you mentioned also, you know, w was fortunate. We were more segregated at that time, True. so we were allowed to build that within our community. You know, you know, when you made money, 
you, you know, the plumber lived next to a doctor. As desegregation happened and we spread out, um, our doctors and the professionals left our communities and just those to come back in. So we didn't have those ceremonies that built up those people any sure. longer. Here are your thoughts on, on well, the authentic black man. We look at the founder of the Watts Labor Community Action Committee and Ted Watkins, uh, a single child mm -hmm. uh, that left Mississippi at 13 years old to mm -hmm. escape a lynch mob mm -hmm. and, and founded an organization uh, with a little help from his union brothers, $5.38, and, and built it into an organization that is the only one of its kind that still stands mm -hmm. from the, the war on poverty that was declared uh, against poverty-stricken mm -hmm. 51 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we look at the example of someone that kept their head lower, kept their profile lower, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and kind of, he, and he actually said it, and he said it in a documentary that by the time they figured out what he was doing, it was too late to stop him because mm -hmm. he'd already amassed um, an economic uh, base for the organization to survive deep into the future. We often wonder, you know, why all of these things are, are failing us in so many ways. And I constantly share, you know, with everybody, anybody that will listen, that it's not failing, it's working exactly the way it was designed to work. <laughs> this is an extension of the legacy of slavery. <laughs> There's no reason to wonder why we have so many black men and women in prison, right. <laughs> why we have some of the highest infant mortality rates in the nation. Thank you for saying that. I have to say that the black man, in my mind, will be the father. Mm -hmm. All of them. Ones who move past the status quo and actually take care of their entire family, that hoist next generation up, mm. because we don't realize that men like Malcolm X, men like Martin King, were fathered by strong men mm -hmm. who took mm -hmm. care of their family. So even if you're that guy who's working a nine to five, putting your kid through college, just trying your hardest, pay attention to the fact that that kid is watching you do this, That's and so he good. gets to start from that level. So I think that that is actually, I think that is the thing that's pulling us farthest down. Because um, when you think of any other race, you just, it's, I, it's nothing for me to see a woman with her two kids, who, her two children, and not a father around. Mm. A black woman. And it's so common that we just think of it as the norm. Thank you for um, sharing that because I think it really allowed people who are watching this. Some, a deeper insight, mm. somewhere to begin. You know, my next question is how you can inform the public on how to exercise their lens, the lens in which they see black men. I'm in the lens. There you yes. go. Okay, right. I'm, I'm, lo I'm looking out at both sides of right. it. There you go. And, and the piece for me is to stop allowing myself to be subjected to the opinions and expectations you know, of others. Mm -hmm. I don't have to. My life has changed just as a result of recognizing how white people constantly subject black men, black people to their expectations that were formed in the first place mm -hmm. around an opinion. <coughs> to hell with the opinion. Mm -hmm. It's important, especially for men. Um, our role as men has to be leadership. We have to be first and foremost. So we have to have a role of leadership to the women in our community as a whole. And as of right now, generally, that's not how we are seen. Um, and it impacts our community. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things, and on all ends, on, on, on men dealing with each other, mm -hmm. uh, men dealing with our children and our women, and from them as well. Um, our women have to realize you have to allow your men to be men just as we have to allow you to be women. And there's been certain things um, within this community, within this, that conflict against that. There's no, you don't lose anything by accepting a role or committing to a role. And I think we're in a day and age where we want to um, make up all these sub roles and all these different things and get away from our base role and you, when you strip all those other things you're going to strip down to some other things get to your base roles um, and associate yourself with your base roles and I think everything else falls in line the first thing we need to do is utilize the word no hmm. the word no is so powerful Temperance. if we used it more <laughs> it'd be amazing how, how far we could get where we have such control of the imagery that is put out there through media. I mean, we, I can pull out my phone right now, film something, and five million people will see it. 
boom, just like that. Mm -hmm. And any one of, you, of, of us here is capable of doing that. And so to, to, to be responsible and own that power is a huge start because the imagery is where it is now. We are an age that is plugged into laptops and computers. You know, my generation, if I wanted to look something up, my mom would be like, look in the dictionary. <laughs> now is Google it. What's the dictionary? You know, search it. Mm -hmm. And so I did an interesting thing. I got on the internet and I just started looking up words, just doing image searches. Mm -hmm. And the imagery is, you type in yep. lawyer, type in doctor, mm. type in artist, type in painter, type, type in beauty. engineer, yeah. type in yeah. beauty, a whole nother discussion. We need another yeah. 30, can we get another 30 minutes for that? <laughs> <laughs> like, mm -hmm. But you type in these things and you scroll down the list. Mm -hmm. And it, it, was, it was such an awakening moment for me. I went to a school which put me onto the National Society of Black Engineers. There are thousands of black engineers, yeah. yet I go into any image search and I can't find any faces. Mm -hmm. If I type in a lawyer, I know five entertainment lawyers off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And these are just people I've met. It's not because I was in a particular club, I just happen to know these people. Mm -hmm. And so we have to get to a place where we are willing to take responsibility and control of our imagery and in terms of putting it out there. And I brought up the word no, because the flip side of that is saying no to the things that we shouldn't be putting out there. Whether we like it or not, we represent everybody. Everything we do, we represent everybody. And so being able to get to a place where we are saying no with a mindset for what's coming next, with the next generation, with a, a much broader perspective of how powerful that no is, we can then start to put forth more positive images, more whole images, I'll even say that. I think that's a because huge start, is starting to get our images, our full and complete images out there. We're so much more than that. We're doctors and engineers and we are scientists, you know, and, and there's just more to it than what's out there. So I'll just add that it is our legacy to transcend and transform. Um, so let's continue to draw on that as we challenge this thing called racism. So thank you guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm always like, I need it to be tight. I need it to be together because I don't want someone to be like, oh, black people ain't got to hate together. Mm -hmm. like there, I, and that is, that is con subconsciously always in my mind. Mm -hmm. It drives me crazy, like, you know, when you're trying to describe someone over there and you can't say, <laughs> they're black. Say black. Mm -hmm. black culture has always been cool. Mm -hmm. always. And so when someone's looking for the cool thing, who are they coming to? They're coming to us. <laughs> and I think we have to shut that down. And she was like, oh my God, you're gonna be in all that sun and ruin your beautiful oh light skin. Oh. We don't have the luxury to like, Read and figure that shit out. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>